Hello everyone, welcome to the third video in the series on Azure OpenAI service. In this video, we are going to learn how to work with Chat Completion API. Let's get started. Now as you can see in the Chat Completion UI, we have three sections. We have Assistant Setup, Chat Session and Configuration. Let's start with the Assistant Setup. So basically, this is a chat session, so we should ask the system to behave in a certain way. Now this is where the system message comes in. For example, we can ask it to behave the default manner like a generic bot or we can ask it to behave in a certain way like Xbox customer support agent. We're saying you're an Xbox customer support agent whose primary goal is to help users with issues they're experiencing with their Xbox devices. Now, if I go into this page here, system message frameworks and template recommendations, these are the things that you can add to the system message. We can define the model's profile, capabilities and limitations and the way that it outputs its format and we can provide examples and additional behavioral guardrails. You can go through this document if you want to understand the things that we can do with it. Now, for example, if we ask it to behave like Walter White from Breaking Bad, let's see how it works. I'm gonna save the changes, all right. And now let me ask it, yeah. As you can see, it understands this system message and it responded. And if we look here in this section, we can use the API. Now, we don't have to use this UI for chatting. We can use completely custom UI for it. I have shown this to you in my first video as well. And we have this option to view the raw format as well. You can basically chat using JSON. For example, you can ask it something like this. As you can see, we are getting a response and we can switch back to the chat UI weave as well. Now, if you look at the right side of the screen, we have the deployment. So basically, we have to select a deployment, which I've covered in my previous video. We can control the number of methods that we're passing in through the API. We can pass in the whole chat history or we can limit the number of messages. Now, in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five messages or we can limit that. The more past messages that we include, the more context the large language model has to answer our question. So it'll have more data it'll have more memory to answer our question. Now, the problem here is that when we increase messages here, we're using more tokens. And as you can see with this, this model here, GPT-35, it has a 4,000 token limitation. So based on your requirement, you can pass in uh, the previous history. As a user, when you work with these large language model based chats, one of the things that you can do to make sure the bot remembers the chat history is that you can, after like 10, 20 messages, you can ask the bot to summarize the chat history. And that is one of these prompt engineering techniques. After that, it'll remember what you have discussed previously. Coming back to the video, now as you can see, we have this limitation here. We have only we can only have 4,000 tokens and more messages that we have in chat history, we're going to increase it. Now let me ask another question here. All right, as you can see, it increased the token count and uh, the bot is responding very similarly to um, Walter White from Breaking Bad. Maybe because of the content filter that I've configured for this deployment, I don't have any limitations. As you can see, I have turned off all the uh, limitations, maybe that's why it's uh, behaving like this. Now that we have covered the chat completion, how it works, if I move into parameters here, I've covered each one of these configuration in my previous video where I covered chat completion API, so I'm not gonna cover them here. And now let me show you how to work with chat completion API as well. Now if I click on view code here, as you can see, I'm weaving the JSON format. When we invoke this API, now these are the things that we are passing in. We have an array of messages and one message contains the role and the content. The first message, as you can see, is the system message. And only after that, we're passing the, the what user says and the, what the assistant says. And in addition to that, we are passing in all the parameters here, which I have explained in my previous video as the inputs as well. And then we have the endpoint and the key. Using this, you can invoke this API through your custom application. And I'm just gonna copy the endpoint and I'm gonna paste it here. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to pass in the whole chat history as the body of this message. So I'm passing in everything. In addition to that, I'm passing in the um, another message. Let me just add another message. Let me ask another question. Let me ask, um, something like this, 
right? Something like this. Let's see whether it responds. Let me just send the request. All right, I'm getting a response and we are getting the completion and we don't have the whole history in the output just sends you the uh, the exact message. Now, as you can see, in addition to the response, it also contains some information about the, the model and the token usage as well, the total number of tokens this has consumed and the, uh, the prompt tokens and the completion tokens. So this is the prompt here and this is the completion and this usage information, it's important because we are paying for the number of tokens that we are using when we interact with these large language models. In addition to this, we can simply click this button to deploy a new chatbot. It's a pretty straightforward thing to do and I'm going to cover that in my next video where I show you how to work with the add your data functionality. If you have any comments or video suggestions, let me know in the comments down below. Like this video and subscribe if you learned something new today. I will see you in my next video and thanks for watching.